We received a very exciting delivery today. Pieces of recovered Thargoid technology, even fragments of spacecraft. Most of the samples are damaged, but we should still be able to put them to good use. Thargoid technology is, in many respects, far more advanced than our own. Understanding it could open up all kinds of possibilities and rapidly accelerate our own development. Space travel, energy, weapons, even medicine. The applications are potentially limitless. I suspect there's a key discovery to be made, one that will open up the aliens' technology to us. Who knows? Perhaps I'll be the one to make it. Uh, but I'm getting ahead of myself. There's lots of work to be done before we can start popping champagne corks. I've given the research teams their assignments. Let's see what they can find out. Progress is slow. And much of what we knew about the Thargoids, or thought we knew, has had to be revised. But I suppose that's to be expected. We now have 12 active research projects focusing on a number of different areas. I find myself growing impatient with some of my colleagues. But that's the problem with being a perfectionist. I set high standards for myself, and I expect others to do the same. Phase three has been a failure. I sincerely believed we were making progress, but just because something works in theory does not mean it will work in practice. There have also been issues with the junior researchers. Some of them think they're being monitored, and one, one actually believes she's being held here against her will. Of course, those who have worked in this sector before know this is not the case. Naturally, our employers keep an eye on us. The work we're doing is extremely sensitive. We're researching alien technology, after all. It's a question of security. Some people can find a conspiracy in anything. Our employers have become preoccupied with one of the research projects. Although I've repeatedly told them, it's a dead end. It isn't even an official project. It's just something that one of the junior researchers cooked up in his spare time. He's a specialist in agricultural science, trying to wipe out famine or something. Apparently, he's created a biological agent that incapacitates the alien technology. Here we are, devoting millions of credits and countless hours to understanding this technology, and he is trying to destroy it. If it were up to me, I'd cut him from the project entirely. But our employers seem to think his work has merit. Finally, we have a breakthrough. A researcher at the facility in the Hermitage 4A system has found something, stumbled onto something by all accounts and it's pushed our research forward dramatically. Essentially, it's a kind of fungus, one that appears to have a significant effect on Thargoid technology. We knew their tech was partly biological, but until now we couldn't find a way to use that fact to our advantage. The theory is that if we could somehow get the fungus into their starships, specifically their hyperdrives, we could shut them down. They'd be unable to leave their system. We could end the war in a single stroke. We have built a dedicated new laboratory so we can properly test the effects of the mycoid. We also have access to an intact Thargoid ship and a living specimen. I plan to test the mycoid on both. Some of my colleagues have expressed reservations about experimenting on a living creature, but I have no such qualms. We must know what the mycoid can do.
Excellent news. We have received a second specimen. We can now accelerate the pace of our testing. So far, our experiments indicate that the fungus affects not only the Thargoids' technology, but also their physiology, as evidenced by the degeneration of our specimen. These results are highly encouraging. If the mycoid can hurt them, truly hurt them, we may have found the means to win this war. Several of my colleagues have left the project in protest over our treatment of the creature. If it were up to me, I would have them executed as traitors. Our latest tests were extremely successful. The mycoid can paralyze a Thargoid system, either physical or technological, in a matter of seconds. It is extremely effective. I confess, the knowledge that the mycoid causes the Thargoid's physical pain brings me some measure of satisfaction. But when one has seen firsthand the effect of their weapons, seen the destruction, the chaos, the bodies, can one be blamed for wanting them to suffer as we have? The Hauliers have departed for the HIP 593821B system with the samples ready to start mass production. We know the mycoid works. Now it falls to other members of the project to determine how it can be effectively deployed. I know there are some who will condemn me for my part in this project. Let them. I harbor no remorse. The Thargoids understand only one thing. Destruction. They will not stop until every last one of us has been reduced to dust. We have created a weapon that can prevent such a catastrophe. We have a moral obligation to use it. I don't have long. Once they realize I'm gone and the data's been copied, they'll send their attack dogs after me. I know they will. But someone needs to show the galaxy what the INRA really is. What it's doing. What it's hiding. I'm sorry for the part I've played in this. Truly. I was a researcher at a facility in the Hermitage 4A system exploring agricultural applications of Thargoid-derived technology. The lab was owned by the INRA. Publicly, the INRA likes to emphasize the whole altruistic cooperative thing, but in recent years, it's become much more focused on weapons testing and manufacture. Believe me, it's a military contractor in all but name. The nature of my field was the study of disease-resistant crops, uh, mycoproteins, that sort of thing. I was getting good results, even if my um, superiors took no notice. Then everything changed. I was running a bunch of control experiments, just trying a few things out, really. It was an afterthought. It, it wasn't even related to the main body of my work. The results were interesting. I didn't think they were particularly significant. Something made me take it directly to one of the Inra guys. I didn't want to go to Dr. Prince. She always been pretty dismissive of my work. I would give anything to be able to undo that decision. Anything. All my equipment and samples were whisked off to some remote facility. Later I found out it had been taken to a 
a weapons testing site in the Alnuf A2AA system. My research was used as the basis of a new superweapon designed to destroy the Thargoids. I heard they experimented on live captives. I doubt any of it was strictly legal. It certainly wasn't ethical. To the public, the Inra is a symbol of all that is possible when superpowers set aside the differences and work together. Well, it might have started off like that, but it's something very different now. Progress at any cost. Might makes right. All our worst impulses channeled into an unaccountable organization focused solely on making bigger and more powerful weapons. Bigger and more powerful weapons. <laughs> If you find this, if someone finds this, make sure it gets out. Please. It's time people knew the truth. I understand that this is a lucrative contract, but I really think we need to take a second look at the production schedule. We have neither the facilities nor the workforce to deliver what's been promised. Furthermore, the facility should be subjected to a complete decontamination before we start. That could take weeks. Essentially, we can't produce the chemicals in the quantity requested within the given time frame. It just can't be done. I'd also like to renew my request for more information on the purpose of the chemical. Welcome to the position of site manager. We're looking forward to working with you on the mycoid project. I understand that you have raised questions regarding the reassignment of your predecessor. It was decided that her experience and expertise could be put to better use in another part of our organization. As discussed, it is of the utmost importance that the chemical be in production within three weeks. We have every faith in you. Our analysis has confirmed that the latest batch was contaminated and is therefore useless. I'm sure we hardly need to remind you how essential it is that this project proceeds without complication. The cause of the contamination must be determined immediately. We cannot afford any more mistakes. The issue with the previous batch arose because your unrealistic deadlines forced us to take shortcuts. If we were given more time, mistakes of this kind would not occur. With that said, we have rectified the issue and extended working hours so we can replace the tainted batch without deviating from schedule. The next shipment will arrive in HIP 7158A2D within 72 hours. Every day the orders come dropping off more of this stuff. Others come to pick it up. <sighs> so we've been told not to ask questions. See, there's rumors it's some kind of pesticide, right? But with the amount we got in storage, they must be expecting one hell of an outbreak. Some of the top brass from Inra's visiting. Boss says he was here to talk about investment, but this guy had a military smell all over him. I know the public thinks that Inra is this great cooperative enterprise, but I don't buy it. I think there's more to them than meets the eye. One thing's for sure, they're running the show here. not to ask where it came from, just to reverse engineer whatever I can. Weapons, shields, power management, anything I can figure out. It's, it's like giving a rocket to a Neanderthal and expecting them to fix it. I mean, where do I even start? <sighs> At least they're paying me well. That's something. I haven't slept. 
slept for days. I always did find it hard to switch off, you know? Even when I wasn't trying to reverse engineer an alien starship. I've made a small amount of progress, but it's always two steps forward, three steps back. The guys in charge are getting impatient, but what did they expect? It's not like this thing came with a manual. made some progress with the drive technology, which is just as well, since I was running out of options. Thargoid drive tech differs radically from our own. Rather than shift space around the ship, it appears to create this stable wormhole for the ship to travel through. It sounds crazy, but the maths don't lie. And if my calculations are right, I might even be able to replicate it. I want to get a prototype up and running as soon as possible. Something tells me the big wigs are about to step in. I've seen this all before. You get hired by a big company, and once you've gone and done the hard work, they swoop in and take all the glory. Well, I'm not gonna let that happen. I wanna be credited with creating the first hybrid drive. I knew it. The minute I handed in my report, the company took over. They've retained me as a consultant, whatever that means. But they're basically ignoring everything I say. They've made some modifications to my prototype, but it was a bit of a rush job. Must be in a hell of a hurry to get to the test flight stage. I told them it was too soon, that we needed more tests. But once again, I got stonewalled. Granted, the wormhole is stable. But we have no idea what will happen when you send a human being through it. So, they decided to push ahead with the test flight, despite my warnings. Some hotshot young pilot full of spit and vinegar, as my old man would say. And not a single brain cell between his ears. The wormhole was stable, but that was never a concern. The question is, what will happen to the pilot? The ship didn't reappear for almost an hour. When it did, it just drifted, lifelessly. The pilot didn't respond to our hails. We recovered the vessel and pulled open the cockpit. What I saw in there will stay with me for the rest of my life. The pilot looked like he'd been turned inside out. That cocky young kid who thought he ruled the sky. I have to say, my sympathy didn't last long when I found out they're gonna pin it on me. They've cancelled the project and launched an investigation. That's just window dressing. There's no doubt in my mind they'll carry on testing in secret. Meanwhile, I'm the one who's going to take the fall. There is a chance I might be able to make it out of this. Apparently, they've developed some kind of Thargoid killing super weapon. And they don't want so much as a whisper in the public domain. So, this is the choice I'm going to give them. Let me walk, and I say nothing. Set me up, and everyone discovers that the INRA is in the genocide business. It's a risky move. But what other choice do I have? Everything is in place. If the Thargoids take the bait, this facility should come under attack very soon. And when it does, we'll find out if our new weapons are worth a damn. It's taken a lot of time and effort to make this place look like an important military site. I just hope they fall for it. It's about time we started fighting back. Everyone's on edge. It's like seeing an approaching storm and waiting for it to break. The air is heavy with the threat of violence. Maybe they didn't take the bait. 
Maybe we hid it too well, or maybe we didn't hide it well enough. What if they realize this is a trap? I suppose it's too late to worry about that now. All we can do is watch the sky and wait. Contact confirmed. Gargo is 1,000 light seconds from sight and closing. Ready all weapon systems and prepare to fire on my order. We've only got one shot at this and I don't want to miss. Wait, wait. What is that? That's not a regular cargo ship. It's huge. Will somebody scan that thing? And tell command we've got a mothership here. And get them the data as soon as possible. All right, all right. That's close enough. Fire all batteries. Successful. Target suffered minimal damage. Sight lost. All operatives lost. Always the same results. I keep telling them. There's only so much we can do with the samples we've been given. We need a living specimen. Apparently they listened to me. We've been asked to build some testing apparatus into secure enclosure. I drew up a preliminary specification, but was told the enclosure needed to be more robust. These creatures must be tremendously strong. The specimen arrived today. The security reports indicate that it made several escape attempts, the most recent of which resulting in a number of deaths. We must take every precaution. The specimen appears to be in poor physical health, but it's undoubtedly alive, and it will certainly serve our purposes. The specimen is highly resilient and seems to be able to withstand severe physical trauma, even to the point of losing limbs. I was reminded of pulling the legs of spiders as a child. Unfortunately, testing on a non-human means no legal red tape to slow things down. Tomorrow we will begin experimenting with chemical and biological weapons. These creatures may be tough, but we will find their weakness. <laughs> <laughs> 